Geographical Analysis, Lecture 8, Introduction to Probability. We're going to begin our discussion with the notion of a geographic process, which is a natural or human force that forms and transforms the world around us. These processes can sometimes be deterministic, meaning that the patterns are created with total certainty, and given a set of inputs, the output is 100% predictable. Deterministic processes are common in the physical sciences, but are actually quite rare in geography and other forms of social science. Common examples include Newtonian physics and controlled chemical reactions. Given the motion of an object and a knowledge of all the forces acting on the, no on the object, Newtonian physics is a deterministic process because we know exactly how that object will behave in space. Such processes, like I said, are extremely w rare in reality, but it's important to be able to contrast the random and stochastic processes that we're going to introduce to these deterministic ones. A, pro a probabilistic process is a process that cannot be determined with complete certainty. So given a set of inputs, we can't be exactly sure what the output of the process will be. <coughs> We can split probabilistic processes into two types, random processes and stochastic processes. Random processes are totally unpredictable, so whereas stochastic ones provide different levels of chance for different outcomes to occur. Imagine the example of a model that tries to predict the parcel, how the development process takes place. Here we're talking about developing an empty parcel of land. We know that this parcel of land can be developed into a park, a residential area, a mall, an industrial park, or the last option is that the parcel is left undeveloped altogether. The question is, is this a random process or a stochastic process? Do we have any information that would allow us to assign different levels of probability to each of these five outcomes? Or is it a complete shot in the dark, and each of these five outcomes are equally likely? Of course, the answer is, this is not a totally random process, but a stochastic one. We do have information about zoning policies, land values, the activities in adjacent zo uh, parcels, and the physical characteristics of the land. Is it a wetland? Is it on a park? Is it some sort of area that needs to be protected? Or is it on a steep slope or flat slope? So we have all sorts of information about this parcel of the land that we can use to actually determine different levels of chance for each of the outcomes to occur. Here, we use the notation of P for probability. So P bracket park is said the prob is is pronounced the probability of of the land being converted into a park p res is the probability of the outcome being residential land and so on so we're going to use this notation of p and some event in here to deter to represent the words the probability of this event occurring sometimes you'll see notation with p little r it basically means the same thing. These two are interchangeable. So the probability of an event occurring, that could be uh, stated with the notation PR or just P. Now, some processes are stochastic at one scale and, and random at another. Take, for example, the probability of there being a tornado at a specific location. If the scale of analysis is the United States, we can certainly assign different probabilities to different parts of the country based on where we've observed tornadoes to occur in the past. So we can call these, low, these areas low probability areas, and we might call these areas the high probability areas. So we can certainly say that a location in this zone of high probability has a larger chance of a tornado occurring than, say, a location out here, where we don't see a lot of past tornadoes. But what happens when we actually zoom in to one of these towns, where we know a tornado might occur? Are we able to say with any certainty where, that ac where the tornado will actually touch down? The answer is no. 
despite all of our knowledge of the processes that form tornadoes, we can't actually predict which house or which street is going to get damaged by a tornado when we zoom in to, say, the scale of analysis of a city. So we call that scale dependence because the probabilistic nature of the process differs when we are looking at the process at the national level versus looking at it at the urban level.